Hi everyone, this is Mr. Esty, and we're going to go over the next part of our project on displaying categorical data. So this will be part two of the project. So in part one, we took a bunch of data and we used that to make a frequency table, and then we made a relative frequency table, and we made a bar chart and we made a pie chart. So now what we're doing next is looking at how we can combine two different types of categorical data. So let's look at this updated table. It's the same as in example one except I've added a third column. So what I want to do is I want to take the these data about favorite dog breeds and I want to combine them with data about another variable. Now you might notice that in the project directions, I gave you the advice that you should choose a second variable that doesn't have a lot of choices. This is what I mean by that. If you look at name, you'll notice that every single respondent in our poll has a different name. None of the names repeat. What that means is that if I choose name as my second variable, it's going to be really chaotic. It's going to be very hard to say anything meaningful about the data because every single name is unique. So instead, I'm looking at this other question about choosing sweet or sour. There's not a lot of choices here. You can choose sweet, you can choose sour, you can choose neither. Maybe you could choose both, but nobody did that. So because sweet or sour has so few choices, it's going to be a lot easier to work with these data. So I've set up a table over here where I have the original frequency. I don't want to delete this. I want to keep it. It's going to be useful later. I'm going to figure out how many people who liked each dog breed chose sweet? Now this is going to work pretty well because a lot of people chose sweet. That's why it's important that there aren't a lot of choices. By looking at whether they chose sweet or not, we still are getting a good a bit of information about the data. If I had done name, we wouldn't get any information because every single name is unique. So I'm asking how many times did somebody say their favorite dog breed was a Doberman and of those people, how many of them chose sweet? So we know that four people chose Doberman and to figure out how often they chose sweet, I can just scroll down, right? Here's Doberman and sweet. So that's one and then Doberman and neither. So that's still just one because that's not sweet. Doberman and Sweet, that's two. And the last Doberman is right here. And that's Sweet, so that's three. Three people chose Sweet. Now you might be saying that's kind of tedious and it's easy to make a mistake. So here's an easier way to do it. For German Shepherd, I'm going to use the Control F feature to find. And I'm just going to type in German Shepherd. In fact, I'm just going to type in Germ because you don't have to type the whole thing. All right. There's one German Shepherd that chose sweet, so that's one. One German Shepherd that chose sour. Oh, and that German Shepherd is from our table, so it doesn't count. So we just get one. All right. And we could do the same thing with Poodle. There's a bunch of Poodles in there, so Poodle. I don't have to match case. I do have to spell it right. All right, Poodle, that's one. Oh, sorry, that's zero. One, two, three, four. And that's the end. And I can just use that feature to fill in this table. So that's my frequency table. All right, making a relative frequency table. Now we are asking something very different here. We, it's not going to work the same as the other relative frequency table because I don't want to know how often, what percentage of the answers in this table chose Doberman. I want to know 
what percentage of people who chose Doberman also chose Sweet? And so the way I can do that is by taking the number who chose Sweet, dividing by the number who chose Doberman in total, so that's 3 divided by 4, that gives me 0.75, which becomes 75%. Of course, there is an easier way, as you might have expected. I can use a formula. I can say equals to make a formula, then whatever is in this cell, slash, so that's divided by whatever is in this cell, enter. Now, I already have my cell formatted as a percent, but if you haven't done that, you can just use the format as percent button to make it automatically convert. And I'm just going to scroll all the way down and it will automatically, I just can fill with this corner box right there. I'll just fill the whole column and it will automatically calculate all of the percentages for me, which is indeed sweet. So I'm all done. I have my frequency table. I have, or sorry, I have my frequency table. I have my relative frequency table. Time for charts. So I'll go to my charts and I have copied and pasted my, uh, my frequency table and relative frequency table. Now, you might notice that when you paste the relative frequency table, it will break the formulas. There's a trick. If you hold down Shift when you paste, so that's Control-Shift-V, um, it will paste the numbers instead of the formulas. Just, just there to help you. But okay, I'm going to highlight these two tables and I'm going to make a bar chart by going insert chart. Boom, done. I probably want to change the colors of these bars, but that's something you can do on your own time. I also probably want to rename this title. I might rather say, I might rather say, um, like frequency of choosing sweet by favorite dog brand. Okay, breed, not brand, excuse me. Now we have the question of how you make a pie chart. So the technique for making a pie chart is really simple. You just highlight the data you want and you go to insert chart. Now right away you might notice here that you don't really want to use frequency for a pie chart. You want to use relative frequency. So there's a simple solution for that. You just take this column, you select it, and you drag it over so that now it's next to favorite dog breed. Notice that this does kind of uh, play around with your bar chart, so you can always control Z to undo that. And you're gonna wanna undo it because if I make a pie chart of this, of these data, right away you're going to notice there's something funky. Like, look at that. Look at this pie chart. This pie chart is weird because it doesn't match. None of these numbers match these percentages. Why is that? Well, because these are not, these numbers are not all coming from the same group. These, the group of Doberman lovers is not the same as the group of German Shepherd lovers. It's not the same as the group of Poodle lovers. So the percentages here are going to add up to way more than 100% because we are not talking about just one group. So the the pie chart in this case is not going to be a valid way to show these data. So if this were your project, you would at this point notice that and say, oh, I can't make a pie chart. And then you would explain that in writing in your, uh, in your project doc because you cannot make a pie chart if your percentages are not coming all from the same group. All right, hopefully that was helpful and you'll be ready to finish up your project
for our next class.